So there, there are many, many games. Uh, you know, even if you just Google it, actually, you can find some of the very most, if you just Google, if you're interested, you say, say Google like the best or most famous games, there is a list actually. And you can start with one, two, and you know, all the famous games you will see. And this is one of them. This is a game played in 1958 in USSR Sochi. And this is a game between Polugaevsky and Neshmedinov. Rashid Neshmedinov, very, very strong tactical player, and he has a lot of uh, nice wins. So this is one of them, actually, against Polugaevsky. D4, knight f6. C4, d6. Black basically is not showing what opening he's going to play here. It could be many different openings. So knight c3. If he plays g6, then we are in a king's Indian defense. But now he plays e5. So this is called... What, what uh, you know, it doesn't have maybe a specific name, but what's the, the structure you get? Yes. Old Indian, you know, the, that, that type of position, yeah? E4. E takes D4. Um, I would have preferred to play the move Knight F3, to be honest with you. I wouldn't allow ED. Yes, Alex. What's the benefit of playing uh, E5 right away like that, allowing like a queen exchange? Well, I think what he wants to do, maybe if you play Knight F3, he wants to maybe play the move E4. Ah, okay. And do something like this, perhaps. What do you think of this line? It's playable. I mean, this is not a common line, so I'm not very familiar with it, but okay. I think it's playable. Knight D2 again. Uh, you just play bishop f5, it's, it's playable. So we have now uh, e4 played. I'm not a big fan of this move, but let's see. Takes. The reason I'm not because tempos. Now black is developing, gaining tempos. So he, now I play the move queen d2. Why do you think uh, Polugaevsky is such a strong player, play the move queen d2? It looks kind of odd, right, to block the bishop. But what is the idea? What is the purpose behind this move? What is he going to try to do later on, you think? Or queen e3. I don't know. Well, I don't think you want to keep moving the queen, though, right? No. no. So wh how do you think he's going to try to solve the problem of that bishop in the long run? Arjun? Absolutely. He wants to play b3 at some point and put the bishop on b2. And that way his queen is already developed. He can put a rook behind it. Oh. Okay? So he's trying to save a move by doing that. G6 is played. Perfect, Arjun. B3. Bishop B7. Bishop B2. At least this way, it doesn't look he lost, uh, uh, you know, tempo, obviously, right? So, castle. Bishop D3. Now, Polugaevsky wants to put his knight maybe on E2 and castle. Knight G4. <laughs> Immediately, you see Nesh Medinov, you know, going for the strong attack here. Trying to pressure. Again, this game is played in 1958, so it's quite possible if you analyze this game and sit with a very strong engine, you might refute this play. But again, 1958, they didn't have the, the programs, the engines, the databases. It was just books, magazines. That's what they were using to study. So I would suggest not look, uh, when you're looking at these old games, not to use the engine too much because it will take the fun out of it. You can basically, you know, <laughs> refute, refute at least maybe half of the games, you know, if not more if you sit there and try to refute these ideas. So, knight g2 played. Queen h4. I'm not sure if knight g2 is the best. Knight f3 seems a little bit more uh, solid to play here to cover some more squares. So, knight g2, queen h4. Putting pressure on f2. You cannot castle because you will simply get uh, mated. So he played knight g3, protecting against the threat of knight takes f2. But it does look a bit awkward. Yeah, this knight e2, knight g3. So I think this knight g2 move, I don't like it, what he did. Knight g e5. Another possibility could have been knight c e5 here, put some pressure. Now he castles. f5. You know, in this kind of positions, f5 is a typical idea to try to open up your rook and try to threaten f4. This is a very important idea to remember. f5 with idea f4. f3. Bishop 
bishop h6. Bishop on g7 is placed well, but Neshmetino wants to bring the bishop to a, another active square, and he wants to use the h6 square to do that. Attacking the queen. Queen d1 is played. Now, what do you think is the next move here? F4. F4. Attacking the knight. Knight goes back to e2. G5. When you lock the position with f4, the next logical thing to do is to play g5 and g4 to put pressure. So now threatening g4. Knight d5, activating the knight and putting pressure on c7. Now. Arjun. Yes. He decided that there is no time to waste here, you know. Of course, rook f7 could have been played very well just to protect a pawn and maybe try to attack later, but he thought the timing is more important, so he went for g4. And that could be the reason why we have this game now, because of this. <laughs> g3, meeting g4 with g3, attacking the queen. Take, take, queen h3. Black really wants to play the move knight f3 check and try to create serious mating chances. F4. And now in this position, if you play knight f3 check, you can simply play the move. I think you can go king f3. Queen h2 check, and somehow he's not getting mated here. But if white doesn't get mated, positionally he's doing really well here. Like, you know, rook h1, rook h6, you will drop your bishop. So. So he played bishop e6, because if you capture here, he can now play bishop takes d5, takes d5, and do you see the winning move? Yes. Check. Okay, now go to the light squares. Checkmate. So bishop e6, he played bishop to c2. And now... Rook f7, protecting this and also bringing more pieces into the game. When you're attacking and you don't see immediate breakthrough, you try to look around to see if you have a piece that you can try to develop. You can bring a piece that is not developed and develop it. Sort of you bring the undeveloped piece in. King f a f2, check. If the king goes only one, we have knight f3 check. So we have to go here. Only move. Bishop d5, eliminating the knight. The knight is active and is a good defender, so just eliminate it. C takes d5. Now. What did he play here? <laughs> Knight before, right? The knight is under attack. You don't want to lose a knight. Sure. So you just activate it and putting pressure. Rook h1. And now. You really want to do something to drive this king. Yes. Rook takes f4. Now, if he takes, he actually took. So let's try to understand. If you take with the knight, just queen g3 wins, taking here. If you take with the pawn, check. And you have this check, and we'll pick it, up, pick it up. And just basically, the king is just going to get mated here in the middle. So that's why he decided, let me take the queen, at least if he survives. He knows he will win, but no, no surviving here. Continue. Uh, Absolutely. But still, there is no mate. C5? Nah, C5, I think he just does an en passant, no? Well, then you can keep back with the knight. 
Okay, which night? Specify. Okay. I don't know. Somehow he's not getting mated, I think. At least it's not forced. Maybe there's just some difficult mate here, but. So that's why, he d and if you take with the other knight, Arjun, he just goes king c6, okay? So that's why he brought the, bi uh, that's why he brought the bishop in. Because now you can use your knight for discovery checks. So a4 covering the b5 square, and now C5 check. Now the king cannot go back, so he cannot go anywhere. He has to take it. Knight e6. BC. Knight e takes again. He will go king to c4. So he prefer to take with the pawn, and now the threat is c5 mate. See? So he goes bishop d3. Trying to create the escape route, you know, on c3. Knight e3 check, king c4. Well, I guess, yeah, you could have just taken on b2, but then he takes on b4. Yeah, take rook d1. That's You're probably winning after rook check or bishop e5. You're winning there. Like this line is winning, Arjun. Check, check. You know, he goes somewhere. You're winning, but you're not winning by a mate, you know? So, like, he protects it, okay? So, it's not a mate. You're winning, though. So, d5, take, take. Look at that. King is coming here. Now. Forced mate you have now. I know, but you have something simpler. You have two moves mate. You have a two move mate here. In fact, your rook f6, if I take queen d3, then I cover the a6 square, okay? Knight c3 check. Knight c6 check, you mean. Yeah, whatever it is. <laughs> and if he goes king a, he can't go anywhere here. He has to go here and now check mate. All right? So that is the famous game. Polugaevsky, Neshmetinov. We're going to go back. This is 34 moves of the whole game, okay? Beautifully. See, he drove, drove the king from g1 all the way to a6 to do the checkmate. From g1 all the way to a6. All so right. that's the famous game that you need to know, okay? Famous game, Polugaevsky, Neshmetinov. All right? I have a couple of more positions for you to work on today to make sure that you're seeing the board very well. So let's start out with this position here. To play, white to play, checkmate in three. How are you gonna do this? You have to calculate Arjun, the, hell, the whole thing. Bravo, let's go. King d6, Arjun starts with. Okay. How many legal moves black has? Let's try to understand. Three. That's one. Correct. That's two. Why not take, Arjun? Steelmate, everybody. Steelmate, don't do this, okay? King c5, perfect. And if the knight moves anywhere, you've got the mate. And if he goes here. Ooh, Arjun, 95, check. You still have two moves to mate, right? You still have two moves to go.
The knight is annoying piece, yeah? Too many squares to jump, too many, too many squares to jump to, too many squares to go to. So what do we do with the knight? Yes? Take it. He still has a square to go to, right? Yes. And if he goes here now, what do we do? Bravo. Bravo, excellent. That is a mate, okay? Excellent. Next. So everybody understand this puzzle? So you start with king d6. If he goes king here, you just take. That's mate. If he goes here, you play the move knight king c5. If he moves anywhere, it's mate. And if he goes to b6, then you have the ideal position to do queen b4 mate. Got it? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Next position. <coughs> See, these are mating trees, but they're not obvious, you know? They're not like check, check, mate. They're not that, that kind. These are much harder ones. No, it's actually mating net endgame. So this one, you just need to find a net, okay? A little bit, it might be a little bit longer than three moves, but just find the, the way to win. Like a net. That is made in three, but this is just a net. This one. Then I'll have some more mating. Oh, yeah. Since I already have this, let's just try to find a mating uh, net here. And then we'll go back to a couple of checkmating trees. Uh huh. Rook b4, you mean? Yeah. Correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you start out with that move, rook b4. Now, he plays the move a5 because he cannot move the knight or anything, so a5. Mm -hmm. Now, again, you don't want to allow him to come here. Uh -huh. So you have to control it with mm -hmm. king f7. Now if rook d7, you just go bishop b7. Then you have a knight g7 mate. Mm -hmm. So he has to play bishop g2. Mm -hmm. And now who is going to show me the checkmate in three here? One, two, three. Arjun? Knight b7. Excellent. Continue. That's it. You see that? So that's setting up, you know, setting up the mating net here. So it was, it's just equal material, not so easy to win, but you're setting up the ideas, okay? And mate. You just have to set it up, okay? Mm -hmm. The idea of rook b4. All right? We're going to go back to those uh, tricky mating trees, okay? Are you ready? White to play mate in three. It's quite hard, actually. Normally, you cannot really mate if your rooks are close to each other like that, right? Yep. So you have to have one... Be careful, Arjun. So you have to have one rook cutting from further down and one rook checking. So you have to have that right balance, okay? So how you can do that? It's tricky, there's a knight to go into a3 or a5. Um, yes, and he will block you from a3 and a5. So that's the trick. He is gonna go knight c4 and that knight is just superbly placed okay. there. Superbly placed. Well, yeah, but that's the problem is we need to do this in in three, yeah? I think the first move, it's more or less natural, I think. You're probably looking at the first move. That's a more or less natural move, but the continuation is trickier. Arjun, what's the first move you think? Rook yeah, rook b8 is the first move because when you play rook b8, now you're threatening checkmate from here and, sorry, checkmate from here, checkmate from here. And that leaves you only with one move to stop those checkmates, and that is knight c4, right? That is the only move to play, because if you check on 8, I have knight a5. If you check here, I have knight a3. And then knight um. 
What do you do now? This is the hard move here, right here. This is the hard move. After this move, you're going to realize that everything is going to work out for you. But that one move is hard. Let's see. So we know the first move. But we have to find the second move to make this work. Otherwise, it's not going to it's not going to work. You, you're going to be able to win this, obviously, but not in three moves, yeah? We have two moves left now. Well, you mean, you mean here? That's B4. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, you will win the knight. But we want to mate this position in two moves now. Th that idea wins the knight. Here? OK, but now? Uh, one move left now. It's not a mate. It's not a mate. It goes here. Over where? Here? No, no. The other one. Here? Yeah. yeah. Takes the rook. Takes the rook. Oh. <laughs> it's got to be something trickier, yeah? It's not just a check check. Check check would be easier. Remember, this positions, you know, you have to find a difficult move at some point. And this is that moment where you need to find that difficult move to win it. Specify, then you have two moves to go. Okay. You have to be specific here. Uh oh, okay. Rook at A, uh, B7. Rook A to B7, he's suggesting. Okay. All right. Now, the pawn cannot move. That means he has to move the king or the knight. Correct. Now, let's observe all the moves. If king a3, what do you do? Rook uh, a1, a, mate. Mate. Correct. If he moves here? Rook a7, mate. mate. So now we know the king moves are mated. Knight has eight different squares to go to here. Yes. So if he goes this direction, then it doesn't really yeah. matter. You just go rook a1 or rook a7. It gets trickier if he goes this way. Correct. If he goes this direction, then rook uh, a yeah. Yeah, symmetry. Symmetry. Yeah. Again, you see that same symmetry yeah. works. So if he goes here, then yeah, yeah. Checkmate. And now, rook a one. Same symmetry works. Bravo. Correct. Good job, Dan. So let's do this again. Let's do this from the beginning. Go. Goes here. Rook at eight, B seven. No, B seven. You pass the turn. You pass the turn. You improve the rook and pass the turn. And now, because the king has it's funny. If it's you, if it's your move here, you don't have a checkmate. No. It's got to be his move here to have a checkmate. If the king moves, he'll be taking one of the two squares of the knight. So that's yeah, yeah. You know. So he goes here, checkmate. All right. So that's a really hard one. Very nice, OK? The tricky part here, his king is in the middle of the board. And we know that it's a lot harder to checkmate the king when it's in the middle of the board. But here, you have a way you're going to be able to do this. White to play, mate in three. And in this one, there are not so many lines, actually. There are not so many lines here in this one. So let's see if you can find the mate in three idea here. And sometimes, you know, uh, the way you would solve these positions, you have to find like the, the odd looking move. Mm -hmm. Or at least that's the solution, you know? It's, it's the odd uh, idea sometimes will do it. But I have to say this is a really hard one. Harder than the previous ones you did. Because this one idea, the move actually here is the hard one. Because it doesn't make really sense, this move. Unless you go deeper and then you will discover the idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, knight d5, king d6. <laughs> you can find a lot of mate in fours yes, 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 then, yes. but you need to mate in three. That's the trick. You want mate in threes, not mate in fours here yeah, then. Yeah. 
you have to find the mate in three here. Arjun. Queen G6. Okay, King F4. That's too early, Arjun. Uh, King E5, you still don't have a mate, I think. Ah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yes, but again, he will he will run back. Yeah, so that's good thinking right there, Arjun. But unfortunately, he has King F3. Yeah. yeah. If, but since now you know this idea, now you have to try to work something similar. Well, your knight will occupy two important square, and your king and queen can control the remaining squares and you will play a checkmate. So the knight has to control the squares, so that means your final move is gonna be with the queen, right? Because your knight will be the one who will be covering the squares. Where, where do you think we can go here, guys? Knight a8, he says. But do you see the follow-up though? Knight a8, knight moves in the side, right? Hmm. Oh no, but that takes that already takes three moves. One, two, three. If you do this route stuff, I don't know. That takes like a lot of moves. But let's let's. I want to give you a little hint. So knight a8, Arjun. King here. Do you really have to reroute the knight? Or maybe that knight could be that key guy who will control those important squares. Look at that. Look at that. The knight is on the rim, but he's controlling two very important squares. Now, he's got a couple of squares he goes to. Can you control those two squares with leaving uh, everything the way it is? Then, king d4, control, right? So, we have this under control. We have everything under control here. So, there's only one square he can go to. He cannot go anywhere else than here. And now, that is a checkmate. Excellent. Arjun, knight a8, yeah, remember. Sometimes you put the knight on the corner and that's the winning move here. Knight a8, you see that? Yes. Yeah, look at that. Every square is taken. Knight is doing a great job controlling it. Yeah, but don't do this in a tournament, yeah? Don't, like, no. only in a specific position. So, okay, let's start off again. What's the first move? Knight a8. Knight a8. He can't go here, he can't go here, he can't go any of this square, so he has to go here. Yeah, everything is square guarded, everything is occupied. And now queen d5, checkmates, okay? So, another very nice way of checkmating, okay? And the last one, okay? All right. White to play, checkmate in three. Again, you have to make, uh, not the easiest move here to win it, okay? White to play mate in three. Again, you're up a, you're up a rook. There's no question about winning it, but the question is, can you win in three moves? Obviously, the knight is our the problem piece, right? Mm -hmm. The way it ha piece set up there, it's not really helping us. So, which piece we need to improve then? The knight, the knight right? But we don't have a good square to improve now here. I mean, we can go to f7, doesn't help. He goes king h4, right? So what can you do instead to perhaps get a good square for him? Mm, yeah, but the idea is correct, but you don't want to move the rook. Rook is okay there. He's cutting the king off. Rook g6, maybe. Rook g6, yeah, but then he just goes knight f3.
he could go knight f7, but then he goes knight f3 or something. Can you get him? King f4? Yeah. But then he takes the knight. You need to make a move that when he takes the knight, you have a mate. Yeah, 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 okay. I know you wanted to put the knight on f5. Yes, I did. The idea is correct, but you have to improve that idea. Yeah. Arjun. Can it? Yes. Now, if he takes your knight, what do you have? Checkmate. Checkmate. So king f6, let's look at all the other options. If he moves the king now, check. Right. You got the mate. If he goes here, you got the mate. So, he has to try to move the knight to here, let's say. And now we bring the knight to f5, and now any move he plays, mm -hmm. rook yeah. g5 or rook takes g5 is a mate. Any move, knight moves anywhere, d4, e5, anywhere, rook g5 is a mate. He's in the net. So, and if you play knight, say knight f1 is the same thing, you play knight f5, and if he goes here, check, rook takes, Arjun, excellent, he goes here, bravo, all right, excellent, great job everybody, thank you for attending, and see you next time, okay?